actually have someone who I want you to meet today. Okay. He's a friend of mine. His name is Johnny Wimbry, best-selling author, motivational speaker. He's author of the book From the Hood to Doing Good. And I thought that he would be someone that you need to meet. Okay. Johnny, would you please come out? Welcome to the Johnny Wimbry Show. We're talking about overcoming adversity, pushing yourself to the other side. Helping Jeff in his fight, life coach Johnny Wimbry. You have to be confident and not arrogant. Who would ever think that someone with my past? I made a lot of bad decisions, but my past has nothing to do with my future. Where I come from doesn't have to dictate where I'm going. You know, think about people who made history in our world. You know, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, right. Gandhi. No experience. They led with passion. If there's one successful person on the planet, just one, then all I said was me too. I like to represent things that are bigger than all of us. It's something that's out, gonna outlive us. I believe that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. In just a few minutes, one of them is gonna walk out of here with 25,000 bucks to grow their business thanks to Johnny. And this is an opportunity just to show that we care. I'm an investor in an incredible respect for money because I know what it's like not to have any. First memory in life was living in a battered women's shelter because of what I went through in my life. How much longer do you wanna have this problem? You're ignoring something. My father, is an alcoholic. Think about that word deception. I mean, would deception be deception if it were obvious? You'd be the last person to know. Police investigating the death of Michael Jackson believe that doctors may have written him prescriptions in exchange for money. There are people who are dead today that would not have been dead if there were doctors who were using their authority the right way. You can't follow a parked car. We follow people and we are mentored by people who look good, they sound good, they're packaged right but you haven't even like checked the hood to see if there's an engine in the car. A dog doesn't even bark at a parked car. Why would you follow one? <laughs> you understand that? Is it connecting? Yes. You can't get something different without doing something different. What's the key to his sobriety? Wanting it, believing that it's possible. You got access to me now. Okay. Look at me, you got access. Right. Use it. Johnny, come back, please. Johnny's book, From the Hood to Doing Good, is available now, and everyone in the audience is going home with the copy. Thank you, Johnny. That, that, that was wonderful. Thank you. You're incredibly I appreciate welcome. you coming. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right. You guys ready to get started? Yeah. Man, I have never gone behind a professional singer before. I can't. I don't think I have. Uh, typically, they don't do that to me. That puts between because you get the talents mixed up. I am not here to entertain you in any shape, form, or fashion. Push you to your destiny. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Incredibly honored. Please always to be on anybody's stage. To be at Nikki Speak stage is another uh, higher level of dimension of introduction to my life. I've had the honor of sharing the stage with some of the greatest speakers on the planet uh, that have been noted to be some of the greatest speakers on the planet, like Jim Rohn, and done projects with Zig Ziglar, and the late great Zig Ziglar, and Jim Rohn, Dr. Um, Charles Gray, and my mentor, Les Brown, uh, the one and only uh, Nichols, and of course, Harvey, and so many others. Issues. Um, but with all that being said, thank you so much. I got flowers. <laughs> My brother got flowers. But I am always honored to be on stage, whether I'm speaking to 20 people or 20,000 people. How many of you know that you could be one moment away from a breakthrough? One moment away. One handshake away from a breakthrough. I'm more afraid of being broke than I am of sticking my hand out and saying, hello, my name is Johnny. So I know what it's like to be homeless. I know what it's like to live in a battered women's shelter. I know what it's like to be four months behind on your house and your car. You ever want to get motivated in life? If you ever, ever want to get motivated in life, get behind on a house note. Have to hide your car. Something happens when that type of motivation kicks in. How many of you know, Johnny, when your back is against the wall, you can do one of two things. You can use that wall as leverage to kick out of it, or you can fall on your butt and complain. Two things happen when people get knocked down. You get up the same person, or you get up a different person. I'm here to create a difference. If you feel me, give me a Honolulu. 
All right, let's get this party started. <laughs> I've had the incredible honor and pleasure of speaking on global stages. And regardless of where I speak, whether I'm in Singapore, whether I'm in Florence, Italy, uh, Lyon, France, Nice, Australia, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Czech Republic, all over the world, in multiple languages, where I have 16 translations going on in the back of the room while I'm speaking to people who don't speak my language. And I have come to find that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And there have been many times in my life when I, when, when I questioned myself. How many of you have ever questioned yourself in the midst of your destiny, in the midst of a blessing, in the midst of rising in life, you question yourself? I was speaking in Nazareth, and when I was speaking there, you know, I play a lot on stage. I have fun. Like, I'm the guy either you're going to invite back or not invite back. Like, that's me. And I was speaking in Nazareth, and one of the things that I talk about on stage, I wrote a book called From the Hood to Doing Good. And I would always say on stage, does anything good come from the hood? And if those of you who know the Bible, that's a play on the words, does anything good come from Nazareth? And I was on stage, and I was having this moment, and I was speaking, and I'm being silly. And in the midst of being, being silly, I broke out in tears. And the reason was I was in Nazareth. And it hit me at that particular moment. Here I am speaking. I'm taking it for granted. I'm on stage having fun. And I'm not really appreciating and seizing the moment that I'm on stage in a place that I've read about for years. And here I am just up here being silly Johnny. You ever been like you, 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 you trying to be a certain way and then you find yourself like just breaking down? First time I ever told myself I love you, I looked in the mirror and I did it because Tony Robbins said do it. And I was brushing my teeth and I said, I love you, Johnny. And, and to me, like 24 hours before that, when I was listening to the audio, I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm from the hood. We don't do that. I'm from Stop Me, Eastwood, Stop Six area. We don't do that. I looked in the mirror and I said, Johnny, and I'm just goofy, like just playing around, laughing. Johnny, I love you. Lost it. Just absolutely lost it because I never told myself I love you. I never said, Johnny, I love you ever. And that was the process of me beginning to start learning how to love myself. And if there's anything that I want to share with you right now on this stage, is this, the, this is the beginning of whatever you want it to become. This is the beginning of an event or whatever you want it to become. We're not here to push you to a place that you don't want to go. I have helped develop over 30 millionaires around the world. Over 80% of them were in their 20s. All of them broke when I met them. I've helped hundreds of people become financially free on a global scale. None of them did I have a conversation with them about, do you want to be successful? I don't show people how to want to be successful. I don't show people how to want increase in their life. I show people who already want it. That's not my gift. That's not my anointing. It is not my gift to push you into a place that you never said you wanted to go. But if you can declare it, if you can proclaim it, then I'll sign up. How many of you believe that there's still room for increase in your life right now? If you believe that, say increase. increase. If you believe the possibilities of increase still exist for you, say increase. increase. Increase is simply a declaration saying there's more, I'm not there yet. If you believe that, say increase. increase. See, I believe, the, the, I believe that you have the power of death and life in your tongue. I believe that the tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I believe. That as a man thinketh in their heart, as a female thinketh in their heart, as a male thinks in their heart, that's what they become. The moment you stop searching for this thing called increase, woe to you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. God created us to evolve. He created us to crave increase. He created us to never arrive. 
See, here's what most people think success is. You think success is a dollar amount. It's not. You think success is something that you can purchase. It is not. Success comes from within. What you have outside is the manifestation of success as reality in your life, but success comes from within. You can strip me of everything that I own, and I'll get it back. Not once. Not twice. Again. And again, because what's inside me will always come out. Everything outside is for sale. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when I talk about success, I'm not just talking about money. But I am talking about money. But I'm not just talking about money. See, some of you have a very shallow definition of what you think success is. It is money, but it's not just money. There are a lot of people that I coach, even celebrities, high-profile individuals that you see on TV that you love them more than they love themselves. That's not success to me. I don't care how much money you got in the bank. That's not success to me. If you don't love yourself, who you are, whose you are, what you represent, and everything that you do, that is success. So saying success is not just talking about money, but I am talking about money. Okay, Johnny, you're confusing me. Chocolate cake. If I say chocolate cake, am I talking about sugar? Yes, you can't say chocolate cake without talking about sugar. So if I say chocolate cake, I'm not talking about just sugar, but I'm talking about sugar. It's an ingredient. Money is an ingredient to success. But it's not the end result. There are a lot of money, a lot of people who have a lot of money that don't love themselves. And to me, they lack success. So let's bump it up and talk about wealth. Wealth is how long can you stare at me right now before you have to go back to work? I can have a staring contest with everybody in this hotel. Not just this room. Everybody downtown Dallas. Everybody in North Texas. And I'd be willing to bet that 99% of them will have to give up because they got to go back to work. I do whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it, as much as I want to do it, until I'm done doing it. And I don't have to ask permission to start or finish unless it's my wife. That's wealth. Wealth is... How long can you survive when you stop working? I'm on a mission right now. I'm on a mission right now. I'm a sniper. And I'm in position and I'm looking for the few who want to tap into the true definition of wealth. So I coach people on a global scale starting the process of hunting for wealth. See, I believe that anybody can be a first generation millionaire. And I know I'm crazy to believe that. But I live a crazy lifestyle. And I teach people to do the exact same thing. If I could share some principles with you right now that I've used in my life to overcome poverty, to overcome homelessness, to overcome things that I did in my life that I'm not even proud of. Smoking weed when I was eight years old. Was exposed to gangs and drugs and violence my entire life. Sold guns in high school, at school. A lot of things that I've done. I got a brother serving 40 years in prison right now, and the only difference is I didn't get caught. So you're looking at God's grace and mercy right now. What I do when I'm on stage is a service. This is what I do. This is who I am. And here's what I found out. When I open up and I become transparent with individuals, that's when they open up and start listening to me. So, Johnny, why do you tell people all of your bad news? Can you imagine how David felt in the Bible? Please don't put that. God, just leave that part out. 
like Paul. Can you just not tell that one part? Just leave out the part that I used to kill Christians. Just, just don't talk about that. Becomes the number one writer in the New Testament. I think he's the number one writer in the entire Bible. So I learned that being transparent opens doors. Why? Because people want to hear from real people who have real stories, who have a real heart and a real passion to pull people to the other side. That's what I do. I help people get to the other side. And the other side is your definition, not mine. I'm passionate about doing what I'm doing right now. This is my service because I'm not in prison. Thank you. My beautiful wife is in the room. Where are you? There she is. Hey. She working with. Good to see you again. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. All right. She'll kick, she'll get me. All right. So um, when I was about 18 years old, a homeboy of mine uh, was murdered. And unfortunately, this was not my first friend murdered. But this was different because I knew the guy who killed him. And I found myself in a situation where I was just angry. In the night of the wake, the mother invited us, invited us to, go, to, to, to be there with the family. And she stood before her son, Casket, and she said, I forgive the young man who killed my son. I was sitting in that church with a gun, ready to retaliate after I pay respect. How many of you know that major things can happen in very minor moments? There's a difference between being present and being here. You're here because I can see you, but it doesn't mean your mind's not on the meatloaf. Do you understand what I'm saying? You may be physically in this room, but you may be mentally somewhere else. It's like a relationship. You may still be in a relationship, but you left a long time ago mentally. All I'm saying is right now, I need you present. For some reason, I was present. For some reason, I heard what she says. My homeboy sitting next to me heard the exact same thing, but they were there. I was present. And my moment was, I don't love him like that. If the mother had already found forgiveness, who am I? Who am I to disrespect this lady that has already found forgiveness to go seek revenge for her son's death? I felt selfish. And I gave my gun to a preacher that night. I was a junior in high school, a year behind because I failed the second grade. Batter women's shelters. Just didn't have a regular life. That night, I said, God, please send somebody into my life that can help me stay out of trouble. I got a brother named Willie. If you know my brother Willie, some of you know him. He's a minister. He was always the good kid. And um, I remember we're 11 months apart. He's 11 months older than me. So pretty close. I just remember, like, smoke this. Do something. Like, do something. I'm the baby boy. You're making me look bad. And Willie was just that kid. I didn't want Willie. Willie's my brother. But God, send somebody in my life that I'll listen to. And I was just begging. I was asking for a mentor. How many know that God works in mysterious ways? The next day at the funeral, about four seats down from me, there was this hot chick with a couple other related girls. And I noticed. I didn't know who they were. And one of them's name was Crystal. Crystal's my wife. We've been married for 21 years this, this next month. It wasn't an easy road, especially being married to somebody who come from where I come from. But how many of you know you got to participate in your own rescue? Here's the number one message I want to drop on you right now. Stop declaring what you want if you're not going to participate. I said, God, send somebody in my life. It didn't come in the form that I thought. But she caused me to walk different, to talk different. I wouldn't take her to my side of town. Like, we're going through stop six, lock the doors. <laughs> this is Eastwood. Lock the door. 
Now we're going to go to the south side. So I wouldn't take her to my side of town to get her caught up, which caused me to start acting different and looking different and ultimately becoming different. The Bible says when I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. I did childish things. And I heard Bishop Jake say this one time, and it just kind of rocked the very foundation of my soul. He said, but when I became an adult, I put away childish things. Put away never stood out to me. That means I know where it is. I know where the old, I can get them out if I need to. I can go get the old Johnny. He's still there. I just put him away. Just don't make me go get him. <laughs> don't bring the childish Johnny back out. Some of you have put things away and you forgot that you still have access. And here's the access. You were born to win. How many of you have put that away and forgot? Well, Johnny, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. Johnny, you weren't there when they hurt me. You weren't there when they hurt me. Well, Johnny, if you only knew. If you only knew. We can play this game all day. I'm going to leave you with this. I know you were born to win because we've all heard a famous message that talks about over 100 million sperm cells and little bitty OU makes it to the other side. I'm going to break this thing down like you've never heard it before. See, this is how Johnny has to talk to Johnny. They're not going to listen to me. I'm an ex-drug dealer. I had a felony arrest in high school. Why would they listen to me? And Les Brown says, Johnny, if you continue to argue for your limitations, I'm going to let you keep them. So the greatest enemy in Johnny's head is Johnny. So here I am in a situation arguing and forgetting on the shelf I'm a winner. Not only am I a winner, the first race in life, I won. I won my first race in life, and so did you. And this may sound crazy, but this is how Johnny has to talk to Johnny. I've been through enough hell in my life, and I refuse to stop in the midst of hell. And the only way I can keep going is if I have this conversation with Johnny. Johnny, you won your first race. Why are you complaining? Why are you willing to give up when you were born to win? And the message started to evolve. Johnny, not only did you win. Over 100 million you wanted your job and you got it. Not only did 100 million of me want me to die, I will never see those odds again. I don't care what you're going through. The little bitty old sperm you would look and say, what are you complaining about? Don't you remember 100 million people wanted you to die and you won and you're complaining because one person said no? One person said it won't work. You got stood up on a date and you're ready to give up on relationships. The little bitty of you that's on the shelf. It's saying, remember me? Not only did we win our first race, this is when it gets Mo Gooder. Not only did I win my first race in life, Everything that wanted my job died when I got it. It was a total annihilation. It was ultimate victory. Nothing in the race lived after me. So you weren't just born to win. You were more than a conqueror. What's more than a conqueror? There's nothing left. You can conquer something that still exists, but when you're more than a conqueror? More than a conqueror says, when you make it to the other side, nothing that was trying to stop you will live. That's on the shelf. 
as you're at this seminar today with Miss Nikki Speaks, I dare you to get that off the shelf. Not for one session, all day. Keep the winner, the inner winner that's within the thing that we put on that shelf. When we put away old things, we put away the childish things. There's something good about being a child because when you were nine months old and you started the process of learning how to walk, you didn't get a life coach for that. You didn't set up a meeting to talk with your older brother or sister. I want to talk about this thing called walking. No, you said, if you can do it, and she can do it, and everybody else is doing it, then me too. And little bitty old you started pushing yourself up. And your legs will start wobbling. Can't keep your head still. Especially if you got a big head. <laughs> and you fall down. And you look back up, and you do it again. What if your nine-month-old kid said, Daddy, they're looking at me. Daddy, they're going to talk about me if I fall down again. I said, I told you it wouldn't work. Get your head out of the clouds and crawl like everybody else. The nine-month-old you wouldn't even slow down to have that conversation. And you put that on the shelf. There's a giant inside you. The nine-month-old you is looking at you right now saying, <laughs> <laughs> we fell down a hundred times before we could even take a first step. And every time we fell down, we got back up. What's your problem? What in hell is your problem? We were born to win. We walked. We fell down hundreds of times during the process of just learning how to stand up. And you're going to give up because somebody said no? My business partner screwed me. My legs screwed me. In their mind. <laughs> if I fight to make these work, I don't even really know my name at this point. I barely even know what's going on in the world. But what I did know is the same thing that you knew. If somebody else can do it, then me too. The Me Too movement started a long time ago. You just got to get it off the shelf. How many of you have a story to tell? How many of you would love to do what I'm doing right now? I train speakers all over the world. I have speakers who are million-dollar speakers today because I taught them everything that Les Brown taught me and more when it comes to the business side of it. Right now, remember I said I'm a sniper? Okay, got it. I was looking for it. Got it. You remember I said I'm a, sni I'm a sniper? And I'm in position. The worst thing you could do, at, get, do as a sniper is get out of position. Because you put everybody else in harm that you're supposed to be protecting. I'm in position. And I'm looking for those voices. I'm looking for people who have voices that want to be on the stage to help bring an impact to the world. I'm looking for people who want to become published authors. Right now, I am looking for 23 authors in North America. 23 people that I can help become global, um, global, uh, globally published authors. Two of them are in the room right now. They have their books in hand. I want to say, is there three of them in the room? Are you one of my authors? My man, how you doing, Joseph? Good to see you, brother. Do you have your books yet? Oh, well, slow down. Yeah, 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 he got it. He got it. <laughs> Regina, stand up. Regina is one of, one of my authors. Okay, brother. Thank you. Regina is one of my authors in my book. Also, the one and only Nikki Speaks. She just saw her book for the first time today, about an hour ago. She'll have some of our, her, her books for sale. Here's the thing. I don't compete against my authors. 
So the books that they have, I put my books away. I do not compete against my authors. I have other books that I have that are available. Just come see me during one of the breaks, but go see them and, and see them for their books as well. So if you're interested in becoming a published author, pull out your phone right now. I'm going to show you how to become a published author for a fraction of the cost of what it really costs if you do it the right way. If you don't have about twenty dollars to $30,000 to do it the right way, you may just want to pause for a second. Pause for a second. Because the worst thing you could do is roll out the wrong way. I show people how to roll out the right way for a fraction of the cost. And we author a book together. Myself, Les Brown, and I, we are co-authoring a book right now. We're looking for 23 people who want to be in this book. Go to CoStarAuthor.com right now. CoStarAuthor.com. There's about three or four questions on that page. Fill out that information. My office will call you on Monday to set up your interview. Doesn't guarantee that you're going to make it in this book. You may make it in another book. But right now, we're looking for 23 people to be in this book. And I would say we'll probably take 10 out of Texas because it's a global book. I have to spread it out. All you got to do is go to that website, CoStarAuthor.com. We will do the rest, okay? We'll interview you. We got ghost writers. We got everything in place. We got book designers. Everything we do is in-house. Just go look at some of our books. All of our books are Wimbry Training Systems. That's my company. I produce all of my own books, okay? So that being said, CoStarAuthor.com. CoStarAuthor.com. You want to become a professional speaker? I got a free gift for you right now. WimbryEbook.com. My name, WimbryEbook.com. WimbryEbook.com. It's a free ebook that I'm going to teach, that I'm giving you, of what I use to master the stage on a global scale. I've made millions on stage. Millions. Since I've been speaking, I've made over $34 million. And I'm going to teach you and show you how I did it, if you have a heart and a passion to help people. That's what I'm looking for. So with all that being said, remember the shelf. Remember the child issue. There's a lot of things that I never want you to get off the shelf. But what I do want you to get off the shelf is that nine-month-old you that said, if you can do it, me too. Thank you guys for having me. God bless you.